gentlemen. Thank you for coming to our Drupal meetup. Actually, this is uh, our second Drupal meetup since we having a hibernation for quite a long time. <laughs> the second Drupal meetup was on uh, last month. Actually, uh, yeah, we are trying to uh, organize a Drupal meetup at least once in a month. I mean, we are also uh, trying to get into the, uh, trying to be active again in the community. Yeah, but um, of course, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, despite with all the business, but we are still wants to contribute to to the to the community in Singapore. And I'm sorry, probably we did we usually offer some food, but this time it's probably not gonna happen. Maybe, but there will be a food downstairs. We can have a spin later on after this meetup. And then uh, I would like to say. Uh, Thank you as well for uh, for Johnny Ko, the guy right here. He is uh, actually from engineers.sg, uh, the community that always record a video uh, tech tech session to record a video and put it on YouTube for 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 peoples to watch again. So it's really really great what you guys did. Actually, I I did uh, before like Johnny in the previous meetup. Yeah, I just. Yeah, had a feeling bringing all the stuff to record all the video, but yeah, I mean, hopefully this is gonna be a interesting meetup. <laughs> okay. So tonight, uh, it's about Docker and Drupal 8, a spin up local environment in fast and easy way. Uh, before we go into the into the next slide. I just wanna like to know, uh, are you guys using Drupal right now? Uh, use before. Oh, use before. So what uh, did you use now? No, I just experiment with that. Sorry? Just experiment. Ah. Oh. I see. Uh, how, how about Docker itself? Have you I been... I've thought, but I haven't tried yet. Okay, sure. Okay. Right. How about you, sir? Uh, no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, so when... We've gone through like an RFP with the company I worked for, and we ended up with Drupal. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, and yeah, it's quite a big company. I don't know if I'm allowed to say, but it's uh, Singapore Exchange. I work for Singapore. You work for Singapore Exchange. Yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, we're trying to move our new website to Drupal Drupal 8, but using it only as a as a content service. Okay. So only as a service and. Uh, we're gonna build our own uh, frontend. Okay. Uh, and we're looking into how to exactly spin up local environments for dev and for testing mm. and sure. QA purposes. Okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah. How about you? Uh, yeah. Did you use Drupal and Docker yeah. before? Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. great. How about you, sir? You know me. <laughs> okay, I know him actually. He's kind of my colleague right now. <laughs> okay, that's good. Uh, so yeah, I mean tonight we going to discuss about Drupal and uh, actually this Drupal eight probably is not really relevant. I, I, actually, you can build using Drupal eight, Drupal seven, or Drupal six. It doesn't matter. But the the one that I want to point out is about the Docker itself. Even though Docker itself uh, can be useful for anything to integrate with the continuous integration with the deployments to the to the cloud surface but um, right now uh, at this moment tonight I'm just going to discuss on how we use uh, docker to to uh, to set up our development environment uh, which which of course uh, later on this one can be uh, distributed into uh, other developers so they don't need to set up their own Linux, Apache, uh, MySQL, PSP by itself, and we just uh, git pull from the git repo, and after that do the, the do the Docker command. Then there you go. That's it. You should be able to see the the site, the, the same site that that the other developers uh, been set up. So, so this repo is using Docker, right? Mm -hmm. It's running on what OS? We will go. Uh, we will we will discuss that in the next slide. Yeah, but basically Docker can be installed into 
uh, any platform, including Windows. So Mac OS, Windows, and the Linux itself. Okay, let's just move on. Uh, so about me, about myself, my name is uh, Pratamo Adianto. For short, you can call me Adi. Actually, it's actually it's mentioned on the front. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm a senior developer. I've been develop using Drupal CMS. I think total about uh, ten years right now. Jumping from one company to another. Now just doing some freelance. Sure. Okay. So just doing some freelance job, and then I've been touching with the Drupal 4.6 as well. So yeah. And then we also part, uh, I'm also part of the committee member of the Singapore Drupal Meetup. Uh, so along with, I, I don't think the rest of the guys here are not going to be here tonight. But um, I'm so-called one of the, well, founder of the Drupal community in Singapore. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, uh, with the community, there's always been up and down. But um, we are trying our best to, you know, we are trying our best to to uh, to to to, 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 yeah, to organize a meetup, to contribute to the community, and to share what we have in terms of the Drupal community itself. <laughs> okay, uh, enough about me. <coughs> so, okay, just straight to the point. As usual, uh, when we want to set up a development environment, we most likely are using this one. So, this one is a it's ready to go to set up LAMP stack in our local computer. So like SAMP, WAMP, or even MAMP. We, in Mac OS, we install this. And after that, there you go. You already have a Linux, then, uh, then uh, the LAMP stack right away into our local computer. But of course, I mean, uh, there's uh, always good and bad with this one. Oh yeah, I also want to point out, if you guys using this one before, it's Fagrant. It's also one of the, you can say it's one of the tools to set up a development environment. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's more using like a virtual machine uh, called VirtualBox. But, this, uh, but Fagrant is it's, uh, more a uh, tool to manage a virtual machine in our local computer. It's a, it's a, I mean, basically inside our Windows, we can actually install uh, Linux, install any kind of operating system using virtual machine. And then this is the, the old architectures right now. Where, so this one is uh, uh, represent one, the, uh, it's called monolithic architecture where all the components, Apache, MySQL, PHP, and uh, any kind of a project itself, Laravel or whatever it is, uh, being installed into one single server, one stack machine. <coughs> but um, of, uh, as I mentioned before, there's a, probably there's a good and bad side with this. The good probably you can install that easily maybe. But um, in my in my personal opinion, it's an inconsistent environment. And then yeah, I mean, uh, so let's say if let's say if we install uh, like a MAMP or SAM, we have a PHP version five point something, then end up we need to test with the PHP seven. I'm not sure whether you can do that. Maybe you can, but um, it's probably it's not as as uh, easy as, as, as we thought. And also limited lack of knowledge on the importance of inconsistency. And for the third one, it's uh, also, it works on my machine. I mean, this is usually what the developers <coughs> complain about. Like, they do something on the computer, then, then finally uh, he yell, hey, it's working. Then after that, when you deploy to the production site, then it breaks everything. Then suddenly saying, "Hey, it actually it's working on my machine. We don't know what happened." So it's uh, to prevent all those kind of things, and also inability to test off scripts. So uh, nowadays it's all about 
continuous integration. Like let's say if you want to more uh, get more advanced, if you want to experiment something like like a uh, like a like a puppet, a shaft uh, for to manage pro, uh, provision, for example, it's probably not gonna be easy because you don't have. Uh, like isolated environment just to do that actually you need to do something with your Mac or Windows or basically your local computer okay okay so this is docker actually it's an open source tools uh, it's simple it's a, it's a platform for de developing shipping also and running application uh, tonight, we are probably going to talk about uh, developing and running applications uh, for shipping. Maybe can be for the next meetup. Who knows? Most do, probably. Do you have that agenda? Like how many points you're going to cover? Tonight? Sorry? Do you have any agenda? The bullet points you're going to cover? Tonight? Uh, yes, yes. It, it will be in here. Yeah. Okay. It will be on the on the next slide. So, uh, oh yeah, uh, yeah. Since since uh, this guy had just mentioning about the things that I'm going to discuss, so uh, later on I'm just gonna present a bit about what is Docker and what's the benefit of it. Then after that, I'm going to sh uh, to show uh, some demo bit on how we uh, spin up Docker, then then into uh, into. Uh, yeah, I mean, in order to to display the website that we are got, we're going to uh, develop in this case is a Drupal. Okay. So just a thought. Actually, this is the comparison between Docker's and VMs. Uh, if you guys already been using Docker, I mean, if if you guys already been using Fagran, then yeah, probably it's a bit busy with you guys. But <laughs> this is just actually just just tell that. Uh, uh, Fagran is actually it's uh, run in a, in our own local computer. Uh, then after that, it has its own separate uh, operating system, which in Docker itself actually uh, it's using this layer the, uh, from the Docker itself. So like uh, all the library, all the all the stuff that that what makes uh, Docker is actually uh, being shared by uh, by uh, most of the containers. So, uh, in theoretically, actually, uh, Fagran is uh, using it's a uh, it's a very heavy actually it's a uh, in terms of the perform performance wise compared to compared to Docker. Okay. okay so this is a uh, uh, Docker components. So we have a Docker client. Docker Diamond, Docker Engine, and Docker Compose, and Docker Distribution or Registry. So just gonna explain a bit. Like uh, the Docker client is actually is a basically it's a command line that we type into our terminal, like showing all the images. Uh, later on, I'm going to show on a on the next slide. Then what's the containers? Then what's the status of the containers? This is all through the the Docker client, and we have a uh, Docker Diamond as well. Uh, it's basically it's a it's a it's a process running for the for the Docker itself. Yeah, this is uh, like a bridge between uh, to to communicate between the client and the engine, which is on the Docker engine itself. It's a it's an operating system. Actually, Docker is actually run on the its operating system. It's called uh, Core OS. Uh, what do you guys heard? But yeah, that's that's uh, that's how Docker works. And we have a Docker Compose. This is actually uh, <coughs> features in Docker where we can spin up uh, containers more than one in simultaneously. So later on, I will I will show you on on how to do this. And then the last one is a Docker distribution registry. So in here, uh, right now the Docker registry is uh, is in the Docker itself. It's in the hub.docker.com. You will, you will find a lot of uh, image, Docker image. Later on, I will explain to you what is a Docker image. 
uh, from running from any kind of a Linux, uh, running the one that has a Apache Solar, the one that has a Elasticsearch, the one that has a Memcache, everything over there. It's ready. Uh, it's, it's ready for you to use uh, for your development environment. So, the idea is to have like a lot of these different containers running at the, at the same time on the machine? Yes. So, mm. you want to have a Drupal instance and uh, Elasticsearch, for example. Mm. You want to communicate between them. You still have them on separate containers? Yes, uh, yes, uh, you can. It's, it's uh, when you're talking about that, it's actually towards to the to the this, this thing called microservices. I mean, uh, it's a, it's basically it's a it's a it's a iso isolation between between one one server to, to another. But that's the. But I mean, of course, you can do that with Docker. But that's depend on the what kind of a architecture that you're going to implement. Uh, yeah, yeah, but but uh, maybe we. Discuss that after this. You know, yeah, it's it's kind of a long discussion actually. <coughs> okay. Okay. So this is the uh, how Docker works actually. So as I mentioned, we have a Docker client here, and then this another box called Docker host. This is you can you can take this as a, your local machine, and then in here we have a running Docker daemon. And then this is the registry that I'm talking about, actually. So, so if you if you can take a look, so client, let's say, uh, want to do something with Docker, so he just uh, initiate some commands, some Docker commands, and after that communicate to Docker daemons. Let's say he wants to use image for image of a Linux, of a Linux uh, CentOS or maybe Ubuntu, for example. Then then the Docker daemon will call this. This image, then after that, use it. Then after that, uh, pull it into the into our local machine. Then after that, we, <coughs> then after that, we run again some commands to make it into a uh, containers. So you can you can take it as a containers is a is a extent is a is a leverage is an extension from the image that 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 we use. So yeah. We will we will go through that on the next slide. So do you need for the containers that run from Docker, we can choose the top operating system? Yes, that's that's correct. That's correct. Okay, the Docker benefits. So what is it actually? Docker benefits. It's fast. Well, uh, I'm actually a long. I've been a long time users uh, of Fagran, and then when I switch to Docker, it's it's totally uh, different actually. So it's uh, I have a lot of a Fagran box. It's just a, I think it's a it's a terms for containers in this case. Uh, when I having a lot of a Fagran box in my local computer, it's just so heavy when I try to turn it on. But then when I switch to Docker, it's just uh, feel, it just it just feel different. It just feel lights. And then secure secure in this case uh, since we have uh, more than containers uh, from one containers to another. Is actually is uh, isolated. It doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't affect with 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 one containers containers to another, unless if you want wanted to. Meaning to say that uh, if let's say if one containers down, then it won't affect with the the other containers. And then lightweight. Yeah, I think yeah. This is this is uh, in terms of a uh, containers. It's lightweight and open source. Of course, portable. Uh, you can install this in anywhere, in any operating system, and microservices and integrations. So I, so this is uh, this this meant uh, Docker. We can we can actually uh, able to to come up with the, with the, what kind of uh, architectures for our application. Let's say let, let's say you have uh, another server that acts as a Backend uh, surface, for example, then the other one is for the for the front end. You are able to do that using uh, uh, Docker and <coughs> extens extens extensible. You can actually just add in anything into the Docker container. Then, of course, the the one that I like about this is the code itself. <coughs> the code of the Docker itself 
it's uh, which we usually put the code into this file called Docker file. We can put it into GitHub repository, and after that, just pass it to another developers. Then another developers will run a Docker command, then they will able to see the set that that the same as the one that we have without any configuration. <coughs> In our computer code. So. So this is the one that we just talked about, something so-called uh, microservices. So this is just to simulate uh, PHP can be put into a different server, Apache into a different server, and so on. Uh, we can we can put anything in here, Elasticsearch, whatever, uh, Apache Solar, Redis, Memcache in here. Basically, it's 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 all up to you on how you want to architect your your server actually. Uh, and in this case, uh, this is represent containers. So yeah, you can take it as a container as a as a server actually. So this is the common Docker usage. So we uh, tonight we are going to discuss about this sandbox environment, and the rest you can use it as a continuous in integration. You can have a one container installed. To be installed uh, with Jenkins or Circle CI to to automate all the all the all the process, all the deployments, and then development co collaboration. This is the one that I I mentioned before. You can actually just uh, pass the code of the Docker itself into other developers, then developers will spin up their Docker very easily. Prototyping, yeah, this is uh, to like. To experiment your architectures, infrastructure configuration, yeah, multi multi tier, and so on. Okay, this is the one that uh, I'm going to discuss a bit. Uh, so uh, I'm going to discuss about the uh, the, uh, the Docker installation. Not really go through, but um, uh, what kind of uh, uh, apps. That available uh, in the in the Docker's, and then the Docker file itself. This is this is the file configuration for the Docker, and then the Docker compose. How we can uh, write a script to launch more than one containers simultaneously, and then I'm just gonna show you what is the Docker image, and then the Docker containers itself. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so uh, this is the very beginning on how we going to set up uh, Docker in our local. So first of all, of course, you might need to have a Drupal project in your local. So this is just one of our example of how we can set up Docker. So as you can see, there's a two options. So both of them is actually is a Drupal project, and in terms of the file Docker itself, where we should put, we can put it in the root itself. But of course, you can do this actually, but um, probably it's not a good practice. And the other one is you put, you separate the Docker file, then put all the Drupal project into its own directory. Then of course along this one, you can actually put a file the for the Docker compose. Later on, I will discuss about that in the next slide. So, in terms of the Docker installation itself, there's a there's a two uh, inst application installation. One is a Docker toolbox, and the other one is a Docker for Mac. So, you can choose, but um, just FYI, the Docker toolbox is actually is the old version. I personally, in my Mac, use still using Docker Toolbox because, yeah, uh, I just feel that it's much more stable than Docker for Mac. I feel that way. But um, on the other hand, the Docker for Mac itself, it's the is the newer version. And then in terms of uh, installing itself, it's very easy. You just download the DWG app. Then after that, you click install, then it's all by itself. But the uh, Sorry. Oh yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I I forgot to add. Actually, 
you you have Docker for Macs, and the, and of course, on the other hand, you also have a Docker for Windows. Oh. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, but um, one thing to note, actually, the the big difference between Docker Toolbox and Docker for Macs is the Docker Toolbox itself is actually on the background. It's still using Virtual Machine, uh, which is uh, the common one is using Virtual Box, on which is uh, for the Docker for Mac. Is uh, they have their own uh, operating system. I think it's 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 built on top of the core core uh, core OS or something like that. Uh, but definitely, it's not using uh, virtual machine. So it's it has its own system actually when you install that. So so yeah, this is just a uh, one of the. I'm not sure whether um. I, 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 I don't blame you guys if you don't understand this. <laughs> yeah, this is just a diagram of, of how the Docker toolbox being uh, work. So you can see that it's actually using, still using virtual machine. Same thing as Vagrant. Vagrant is also using virtual machine, but in this case, it's a, in this case, it's a virtual box. And all the Docker, comp all, all the application that all the uh, Docker components, like a Docker itself, the Docker Compose, Docker Machine, is still running under the virtual box, which is, which is for the Docker for Mac itself. They have, uh, yeah, I'm, not, I'm also not sure about this, but um, this is has uh, their own priority uh, system actually. Okay, next one. So. Uh, move on. So this is how the Docker file look like. I believe this is a syntax from uh, Go language. Language. Uh, uh, Golang. So on the first line, uh, on the so okay, sorry. Um, so I'm going to uh, explain a bit uh, line by line or what is it does actually. So this is this is the minimum. Uh, this is this is the minimum uh, setup that I personally use actually uh, in terms of the of the how the the Docker setup for the first time. So for the first line we have from this is actually is a pulling an image called Drupal. So if you go into the Docker Hub registry, uh, you will find. Uh, an image called Drupal, actually. and then this seven Apache is actually is a tag. You can say it's something like a version. You you will have like let's say six Apache or eight Apache. It's just to tell us that uh, we are using image called Drupal, which has a Drupal seven in it, along with the Apache already installed in the image. Uh, maybe I'm just gonna do a sneak peek on how. Uh, on what the Docker Hub registry is, just in case you guys. <coughs> Sorry. Yes, it's free. It's free. Totally free. So this is the uh, the Docker Hub itself, the Docker registry. Let's say you want to spin up uh, containers uh, with Elasticsearch, for example. Then what you need is probably an image. Which has already Elasticsearch installed on it. So we just search. It's just actually I haven't done this, but uh, let's just see. There you go. This is the image. Okay. Uh, things to note: I uh, I personally use the image that has a lot of stars, and whatever that comes up in the first one, I believe that's the one that should be stable enough. And then this what is how. Sorry. What did you type? Elastic search. Elastic search. Yes. Sorry. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's official too. So. It, yeah. It doesn't really obvious, is it? It's obvious. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I forgot what's the name. Ah, there you go. Elastic search. Then let's just try Drupal. And then, yes, it's in here. It's it's uh, in in Drupal itself. It's called tag. So, in this case, uh, from the from the sample that I just shown you guys, 
I'm using this one, 7 Apache. If you guys want to experiment using Drupal 8 along with the with the with the FPM, uh, install it inside of Apache. You can do that. Uh, it's a it's a it's a another uh, server. Uh, I mean, sorry, another something like an Apache, but but more but more faster actually. Like it, like it, it doesn't use CGI anymore, something like that. Yeah, yeah. I I, I forget already, but you can you can cook by yourself. Yeah. So this is this is this is the whole instructions on 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 how you use the image. Okay. <coughs> so this is it. Okay. Back to our uh, slides. Then on the line two, we have. This thing called maintainers. Uh, this is just to tell that who's the author of the of the Docker file. Uh, this is the most. Oh, sorry. Okay. Now this is now uh, the next line and so on. It will be interesting. Actually, this is a bunch of commands like uh, to install all the all the remaining components into our uh, containers. Since there's no Git. And there's no theme and so on, so I need to install this as well, in and then then specify it in the into the Docker file. Uh, just FYI, this is actually it's a, I believe if you guys are already familiar with working with Linux and especially working in a co command line, this is basically the uh, the same command line that you use to install all the components. Yes, uh, but uh, it's of course it start it 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 needs to start with run. Yes. Windows itself, when you install Docker for Windows, you will have uh, a different set. terminals. Yeah, for you to use this uh, kind of command. This is something we have to prepare. This time. Yes, this is this is something. You have to write all those. Terminals. Yes, yes, that's right, that's right. So for Windows, it's no package manager. So how to install this? What do you mean by Windows? If you if you if so you talking about this is running on top of the VM, so yeah. the VM yes. probably the one running those not Windows. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So it's not really a Windows actually. It's a it's a it's a Docker application itself that already been installed in Windows, which is you can actually run a com uh, run a Docker command that 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 coming from this file. Yes. Okay, it's a, how it is. Of the uh yes. Uh, <coughs> interestingly, in the in the Docker image itself on the on the Docker containers, they don't have sudo on it. Yeah, it says just run the command directly. Yeah, it doesn't use sudo. Probably it doesn't recognize. Yeah, it doesn't. So if you want to create, you you Yes, you can do that. Yes. Sorry, sorry, just one question. Normally, this Docker file is normally a standard basic configuration, right? Mm -hmm. It will be available online. All yep. you have to do is just get the Docker file, you just run, execute the file. Basically. Yeah, it will be available online. Also. So, the idea is this is the one that we store in our key, right? This is the one we store in That's right. Control. That's right. Just run That's right. That's right. And then, of course, along with the with, with other things, yeah, this is just to, to clean up all the stuff from Linux itself. Then this is to install the composer because my idea is I want to install Dross, which is uh, uh, get from the composer and then just set the inf uh, environment variables. So uh, Dross can be run in any directory. OK. So yeah, this is. Yeah. But of course, there's a more of it uh, with the command. But this is this is just the basic one that, that, that I want to show you guys. There's a there's a copy as well. There's a move. There's a CMD. Uh, later on, maybe that's for the for the next topic. <laughs> okay. Then the next one. This is the for the Docker Compose. So it's actually using YAML file. This is a YAML file, by the way. 
it's yeah so docker desk compose dot yaml and again just just a note the docker compose it has to be put in the same directory as as the docker file so it has to be side by side oh yes same directory yeah that's correct and let's just get through line by line so the first line it just tells that uh, version two actually actually um, uh, I'm not sure as well uh, why because you can still take this out and then run the Docker Compose command as usual. But um, I think it's now it's it's uh, it just tells that uh, this command of the Docker's is the latest one, which is currently is a version two. So I think it's already standard practice. Uh, we just put this one version two, and so, then uh, this YAML file also we have to take one. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Then after that, the next line, the second line is called services. Uh, this is this is the one. This is the most interesting one actually. So if you take a look, right, I put some uh, red rectangle here, uh, rectangle here to to indicate that this is container one. This is container two. So under the under the services, I'm actually specifying. Uh, two containers. One, I name it as RD Web. You can actually name it into anything else as long as it's understandable for you guys and, and as long as it's clear. And then the next one is RD MySQL. I will explain to you what's, the, uh, what's this used for actually. So uh, I'm going to discuss the first one first. Uh, build. So if you, if you notice, build is a key with the value of dot. So this is just tell us that uh, this is the root directory of the of the the whole setup that uh, that the Docker need to that the Docker need need to read. Yeah. Basically, it's a point into this uh, this directory. Yes, that's correct. Dot. Then ports. This is the the uh, for the ports make um, mapping. What kind of a ports that we want to map from from the containers to our host? So this one tells that uh, the ports 80 inside my containers will be mapped into the port called 8080. You can also uh, able to set this one as 80 as well. That doesn't matter. But it's just when you set when you set it such, such a way, you will access your website in your browser using port 8080. I mean, this, yeah, this is just one of the options. But of course, again, you can you can set this as a AT uh, to uh, still uh, still to be able to use AT. So you can use the access without any port in your URL. Is it possible to not just ports and with a local host and virtual hosting? Sorry. Like host name, like dev one, for example. You can. You can. You can. Yeah. So, zoom. Oh, sorry, sorry. Is it? Ah, oh, sorry about that. Uh, sorry. No, oh, double tap is actually goes to the next slide. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, I can, I can do that. Oh. Ah, oh, come on, Mike. So uh, I don't know whether this is good for you. Okay. <laughs> okay. How about this? All good. Awesome. Yeah, I should set it to the uh, full screen. Eh? <laughs> anyway, and then the volumes itself. This is. This is to, to mount, uh, to mount the directory between uh, our host, which is our local computer, into the containers. So basically. Uh, Whatever file that we change in here, it will be available in the containers uh, on this directory. And then this is the the, the, the standard directory that, that yeah that were set up in Debian Linux. It's always been here in here. Okay. Then after that, links. Ah, this is the most interesting one. Actually, links. This is uh, the one that connects to the these containers called RDMySQL. It just tells that this containers is also called 
calling these containers to be working side by side. So like a dependency so uh, yes. who run first the second something like that. Then... That's correct, yeah. And then the working there actually this is optional, but um, this is when you access your containers, uh, you will be given this directory by default. It's 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 more like a uh, setting up the home directory of your server. Okay, and then the next containers. Okay, uh, so in this uh, project, actually, I uh, just want to sh uh, show uh, to sh sh uh, to show that that uh, that uh, for the other containers, it's. Uh, it's gonna contain MySQL. This is uh, this is uh, the server that act that uh, that act as a as a database server for our uh, for our Drupal project. So you can take it as a we have another server, and then this uh, another servers. On the other hand, the other servers is gonna contain the Apache, PHP, and the Drupal project itself. Then the other one is uh, using uh, contain only MySQL. Sorry. Uh, the Yes, yes. It's uh state stateful you mean you mean like uh like, like the user session, let's say you have two instances of RD web, right? Hmm? Uh like log into one instance. And then afterwards, I lock, I, I connect to the other instance. They will like transfer my. I'll still be logged in to the server. Uh, log in. You mean log into Drupal site itself? Uh, yeah. yes. I mean it's it's basically it's a it's it's act as a server. You can you can you can still log in from one server to from one yeah. computer to another. Yeah. Yeah. I mean you can take it as a this one is a is a like a. VPS or, or yeah, it's a server. You can I mean just a rough. You can figure out you like multiple instances of the web, right? Hmm? I mean, the, the compose file. Yeah. 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 Ye
what's the name of the service for the AWS? But basically, if you S3 yes, yeah, no, S3 is a is a bucket actually. Oh, okay, the blog store. Yeah, some, I forgot, but but they but they they give you uh, some set of a URL, right? Uh, where where you can actually put into the uh, settings.php like the host. This is actually the the, the host name. So it's a it's the same pr uh, principle actually. Okay. Uh, I will I will explain to you on on, on how that works actually. I think it's an interesting decision to split off the SQL portion of the server and have it hosted separately and separate container. Does it have issues with like say if you if the two Drupal instances mm -hmm. call from the same SQL table? Mm -hmm. Yeah, would, would it be like this? They're very corrupted. Call from the same tables. Yeah. But I'm trying to. SQL. So they probably have the same SQL. SQL is in the car. Yeah, they have blocks. They have. Uh, okay. They'll be able to handle things like that. Okay. It's the same identifiers under causing problems. Especially since the containers are like making. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, so we move on to the container two, uh, two which is uh, going to contain with the MySQL itself. So for in this case, I just name it into my uh, RD MySQL. Actually, just tells that this is for MySQL. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for the RD web, you're not defining the, like what image to use. Oh, yeah. we already uh, notify here. Here, this is the image for the for for the container one. We define it in here actually. Because we're saying build, where the other one we're not. We specify build. Yes. Yes. yes, yes, that's right. Ah, that's okay. correct. That's correct. Yes, yes. So the setup for the RD web is inside the Docker file, mm -hmm. where the other one is just taking the default. Uh, default file. Yes, yes. So okay. So this one is uh, for my <coughs> RD MySQL itself. This for the container two is oh sorry. It's actually it's a uh, it's a uh, pulling an image called MySQL, and then the tag. Is we are using 5.6, so I don't know. Maybe we just if we can go back here again. Sorry. So uh, let's say MySQL. If you notice, we have MySQL image here. Come on. So this is the tag that I use. 5.6. So 5.6 or yeah well yeah 5.6 so so this is the available text uh, that the, from the Docker image of MySQL. Okay. Okay. Where are we? Yes. Okay. <laughs> then same thing. Uh, ports. Uh, we need to uh, map the port. I mean, in this case, it's just a MySQL. Uh, it's a it's a default MySQL port. Uh, we just map to the to the same port. I actually this one is also useful if you want to use uh, like my MySQL client, SQL Pro, or MySQL Bench, for example. Uh, so it will it will able to, to to access the database from our containers. Then environment. Uh, this is this is the one that uh, need to set. Basically, it's just it's just a uh, settings for the for the what kind of database that we need to set up, and then the username and password, and also what's the root password. This for this this uh, environment variable is actually it's coming from the from the MySQL itself. So in MySQL, actually, there's already uh, instruction on how to use the environment variable. Let's see. Yes, of course, of course. Uh, in in production, there's there's a uh, there's another way actually to do that. You need to install some kind of a console, for example, like a surface discovery. I mean, it's all, it's uh, everything is is more uh, for the part of the DevOps. Thing. Yeah, I mean, if you want to do uh, uh, shipping deployment of the container itself. I 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, but yeah, I, I can give you some tips, but actually after this, because uh, that's that's actually is another long story. <laughs> and then expose. So this is just to tell that uh, I need port 3306 to be able uh, to be accessible to the container one. Actually, this this is meant for the for the for the one uh, between one container to to another. So the container one can use the port 326 uh, to access the database. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This is just the representation of how the Docker image itself. Later on, I will show you some demo on on what's the what's the exactly look like on the command line. Uh, so, so you just hear that uh, we have Ubuntu uh, image called Ubuntu, right? And with the text of uh, for 5.04, it just tells that the version of the Ubuntu. Then we have more than one image. <coughs> and then, nah, oh yeah. By the way, this is the this is the Docker command to show the image that we so far that we already download. And then this is the just to show uh, the containers that so far we generate from the image. Yeah, just uh, I'll, later on I will, I will show you uh, what the containers look like from the command line. Uh, again, so just to point out as well, since we are setting up like this using Docker, this is something that you should also take note. So when you install the Drupal for the first time, uh, there's an information that you need to put the database, right? So this is the name. Uh, this is the uh, settings that you need to put into the Drupal itself. And then you notice, right, that the database host itself is a RD MySQL, and then that's actually it's a the name itself is actually is becoming a so-called alias. For, for for other application that need to be access. So in this case, I can I can I can uh, I can tell that, like for example, database host, we need to spe specify something like this. Uh, sorry. Yes. Yes, I think so. Yes. Then that means you you need to put. Uh, Let's say one nine two point one six eight point something. Then don't forget the port. So. Okay, so this is some other other do, the, uh, the Docker commands. Uh, this is the one that I frequently use. The Docker V is just showing the Docker version, and then the the Docker run is actually is to is to to generate the containers from the image uh, itself. Then the Docker exec, actually, it's a, it's I use this more for the accessing the container itself. So you can take it as a SSH or using FTP uh, into the into into goes inside the containers. Okay, so you have two containers on the Docker. Hmm? One is for the report and one is for the database. Can I use the database from an external server? Yes, of course. Right. Yeah, you can. So that's how the the host I just indicate the IP address of the. Yes, you can. You, yeah, you can. You can. You can take it as like that. Yes, that's correct. Okay. So what time is it? It's eight o'clock. Okay. So we're going to demo for a bit. Able to see this, or oh, still not really clear? Sorry about this. Is it clear for you guys? Okay. So, this is the terminal. When you install Docker for Windows, this is also something that you will get. Uh, in the 
uh, yes, it's a terminal bash. I mean, yeah, uh, command line uh, for the one that usually working uh, with the Linux or Mac OS. This is probably already something familiar with you guys. Okay, so we are actually in the root. Uh, so this is where I put my uh, Drupal project. So if we see all the what's uh, what's the files and folders inside this uh, directory, you can see that we have if not this one, <laughs> this is coming from the Mac OS. So we have a Docker Compose and Docker. Uh, sorry, uh, Docker file, and then the Docker compose that you have. Then we have a, a directory called docput, which is if we go into the if we go into the docput itself, right, this is the the application of our Drupal itself, the, the Drupal project. Okay. So I already have Docker installed in this computer. So if you want to know what version that you use, you type in the Docker dash V. Okay. Are you going to are you going to are you going to demonstrate? Yes, yes, yes. The question is not proper. Yes, yes. Huh? Uh I'm probably not gonna uh, ex uh show you how to install the Docker. Uh, probably yeah, I'm not going to show. No, I'm not going to show. Because I already have Docker installed in my computer. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to show you on, on how it looks like. So we already have all the uh, file, uh, the one that we just discussed uh, here in my computer, right? So basically, I'm actually using this, uh, this, uh, this uh, schema. Uh, Sorry. If we go back for a bit, I'm using this one. Okay, you guys uh, follow with this one? Yeah. Then, if we take a look at the Docker file itself, it's basically it's the same thing what we just saw on the slide just now. Right? And then, same goes for the Docker Compose. Okay. Same thing. So now you can check like how many containers you have. Can you do something uh, among the container? You just do some action. What do you mean? Anything like uh, you contact other container from this container? Yeah. So, so I'm just uh, going to uh, just to, to demonstrate on 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 how you run a command. Uh, in this case, is Docker Docker Compose and how it's a uh, and, and you will see that uh, some of the components that the, the Docker download, like uh, downloading the image and generating the containers, will work actually. Okay. So what I'm about to do is I'm going to run uh, Docker compose up. So this command, the Docker dash compose up, is the first command that we need to run in order to. Download all the image and then generating the containers. Just by this one single command, it will generate everything. So okay. Okay, sorry. First of all, I probably going going to show you uh, this command as well. Docker images. So this is will list out all the available image in your local. Well, if I do this. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is one of the ways. Since I'm using Docker Toolbox, I need to run this command first in order to use. But when you use Docker for Mac, you don't need to do this actually. Yeah, you will, you will, you you will have a Docker command run right away. But I need to run that, that the command first. Okay, so again, I'm going to type in Docker image. What does it look like? Now, you see this. So uh, this is actually yeah, this is this is some of my, some of the image that uh, I've been using, and then some of it is actually is a, is a really my work. So in here, rep repository, we have a field called repository. Then tag, 
then the image ID, then created, then size. Okay, but if you notice, right? Uh, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Hold on. Actually, we have already Drupal 7 Apache here. This is this is the the, the image that already been uh, I download before actually. Yeah, so I download this uh, image called Drupal with the tag set Seven Apache. You can use this command to pull <coughs> the image like that. So it will. Uh, I'm not sure how good the the internet connection here, but um, this one probably takes some time to to to, to download. Okay. So all these images are now downloaded from online, the, the website which is... Yes, that's correct. It's from the Docker Hub repo by, repository. Uh, by people like anyone? Or yes, you can. Or? You can. There's, a, there's also... Uh, I, sorry, I didn't mention in the slide. Actually, you can actually create uh, your own image. Oh, okay. Yeah. So whatever I built, uh, whatever I set up in, in this one, I'm able to oh, okay. See? Uh, so if we if we go to the home page, this is the image okay. that I pull my, that I push myself to the Docker Hub. And this can be used by anyone else. Yes, that's correct. Then how do you make sure that uh, I can just put some malicious code in there? Sorry? I mean I can just put some malicious code and you know, some, some other other people's machine in there. Uh no, this is your yeah, image. You uh, once you pull this it's only you who can who can who can oh, change this. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if, later on, if you want to use my image, then you put your own malicious code. Then you create your own image. That's up to you. I mean, if, if suppose you are using someone else's uh, images, right? Yeah. And if that image is uh, so, not the right image to use. So image is uh, you. You can take it as a as a predefined installation. Okay. Do they have this kind of certification? I don't know. So yeah. Well. Mm -hmm. The ones, the, the top one usually was just set like oh, yeah. MySQL set official. Oh, can you go to the set? Yeah. Official. Oh, I see. Oh, the other ones are like so. Yeah. Things and, uh, you have to have a trust because you also download a lot of modules from contribution. Right? Yeah. Right. Do you use your the, the Drupal user? Uh, no, I, I, I'm not. Usually in in Drupal community there is a lot of modules. Okay. You also download it with the trust. Okay. Usually. <laughs> Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, let's just get started. So, um, uh, so, oh yeah, another one. The one, the command line that I used to use is uh, Docker ts uh, underscore a. So you can just do this, but um, this is to list out all the available containers that currently running in your local computer. But if we, if I type this. We have nothing because there's no containers that are currently running right now. But if we put flag dash a, for example, then you will see maybe uh, you could uh, you could make some container running and yeah 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 I'm I'm about to do this I'm I'm just I'm just uh, just to show you on, on what it looks like when we type this command yeah okay. Yes, yes. So, you mentioned Docker modules, right? So, Do if let's say you were to add a new module to the Docker, Docker file, you would have to, I mean, every time you add a new module, you would have to spin up the Docker again, right? Docker module, as in what? Uh, Docker module. Hmm? So, every time you add the module into the Docker, like every time you add a new module, you have to, do you like declare the Docker file? No need. Well, how, how, how do you? Ace, uh, okay. Uh, I'm not familiar with the Docker file. In yeah, in basically when you're talking about Drupal module, it's just adding additional files into your app. Okay. When yeah, then you download yeah, okay. you download the modules, and after that you put in. I mean, you in my case, right? you, do, hmm? you check them right? you commit them. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, oh, you okay. you have to commit to the 
to the gate. So it's cold. Yeah, yeah, okay. Mm. Then also that uh, we have strong people sometimes. Uh, I still have like, it's one area. So if we created the container, will the application start running immediately or we have to trigger it? Yes. Yeah. Let's find out. <laughs> okay, let's find out. So if you notice right, uh, with this all containers that I have, it's all the status is all exit. Exit means it's not running currently. And just want to explain a bit. Okay. So we have this field called container ID, which is it's just a random number that indicate that uh, to each of the containers, right? So, so this thing is actually it's it's your your containers, your individual containers, and then the image itself is just tells that what image does this container use. So, for example, right, these containers I'm using image called MySQL with a tag of four five point six, right? And then this command is just uh, I don't know how to say about this, but um, this is this is just basically it's a it's a it's a command that currently been running the first time container has been created. I mean uh, that's theoretically, but um, I will find out. But I, I I think you can you can select that. And then created this is created in seven days ago, and this is status status is not on, and then. Uh, this is like alias actually, more like alias. In, so instead of uh, using, uh, so there's this command where we ne actually need to specify which container that we want to use. We can actually use the the container ID, or we actually can use the name itself. So either way, but sometimes I just use this one yes it's more precise. But if I lazy to remember, I just I just use this one. That says there. Hmm? Is that something that we have to do, or is it like part of the image that we download? It's part of the image that we download. So that entry point. Yes. Inside my SQL image. Yes, I mean. Yeah, actually, it's a, it's a, it's a, not a topic to discuss actually, but um, uh, whatever's uh, uh, mentioned in here is actually it's a, it's a coming from the, from the image itself, but um, we can specify what kind of a command that run, uh, so. In the Docker file, uh, there's this uh, this uh, command called cmd. We can actually uh, specify what kind of command that runs in the first time when the container creates, and it's it's going to be listed listed in here. Yeah. Right. Looks like if you do Docker run, there's four command of this without specifying. Ah, uh, sorry, again, what was that? Uh, if you do uh, Docker run without specifying any additional parameters, it will run the command there. The Docker run. Like yes. Yeah. Uh, Unless you specify other parameters, then it's also running the command. Uh, no. The the Docker. You you talking about this one, right? Yeah. Docker. So if you just do the Docker run like this, yeah. The command there will be run, run. But if you don't, you if you if you type Docker run and then you do like a echo hello world, it will run echo hello world instead. First, okay. <laughs> uh, first of all, the, the Docker command itself it has to be run whenever there's a Docker file. Yeah, but I'm saying yeah. if you run Docker run with parameters, hmm? you override the command default. No, it's going to create another another containers. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a it's, it's gonna be as a oh, okay. totally separate containers. Okay. Anyway, so so I'm going to run this one. Docker compose up. This is the this is the, 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 the first command that we are run for the Docker compose. So I click enter now. And see what's happened. Hopefully the internet is quite good. So as you can see, we are actually uh, running the so the Docker is actually run uh, the command that we specify in the Docker file. So it tells that step one is is uh, running that command. And after that the Step four and so on is actually it's a showing the status of of the of the command that we specify in the in the Docker file. So in here we actually can see that the Docker is actually trying to install some of the components that we uh, uh, define in the in the Docker file. Yeah, it's basically it's a it's a it's a commands that we are specified and then run at one go. 
So you can rebuild the Docker Composer anytime you want. You can specify a new component inside the Docker file, and you can rebuild the uh, Docker Composer something yes. anytime you want. Anytime, you want. how many? Doesn't matter, right? Yes. You can, okay. Yeah, yeah you can select that. So now we are running the the next step. Run app get clean. Then the next one is uh, we are installing the composer. The composer is probably gonna take some times. Okay. So hopefully the internet is quite good. <coughs> Actually, I didn't really prepare, but the. Yeah, it's this, this this normal actually. When we run this command in the Linux, it also happened like I don't know why, but anyway, it's it's working. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> so the so I don't know. I mean, uh, from here is there any. More questions, probably. I to ask. Is there any, how many more topics are you going to cover? After this, is 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 done. Okay. Mm. So in the actual production environment, Sorry? Uh, the production environment the setup is a bit different. Other than the top of line and the yeah. those, anything else? Okay. When we talk about the deployments yeah. of our application. That were developed uh, yeah. using Docker. Yeah. In this case, it's the content itself. Yeah. We need. I mean, this is my opinion. Uh, yeah. We need to find a, a services mm -hmm. that uh, also run the Docker engine. Oh, okay. Yes. So the one I know. Something like uh, this command prompt. Yes, that's correct. So whatever that the the hosting provider yeah. has uh, application. To run the Docker yeah. containers, from what I know is yeah. uh, right now it's a AWS. Okay. So AWS. Yeah. Yes, they have this uh, product called ECS. Yeah. It means uh, EC2 Container Services, okay. and I think another one is I don't know maybe Google Services, but so far it's only AWS. Okay. So there's uh, another way to deploy this. So we just deploy the containers okay. to the ECS, and after that ECS. Doing by itself, okay. then there you go. Your application is already built, built into the AWS platform. Oh yeah. Okay. So in this case, actually this is this is uh, done. This is done. So I'm going to open another terminal. Okay. So I'm just gonna open another it terminal. Like yes. It also started the. Uh Downloaded everything and then started the, the, the container. Yes, okay. yes, 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 yes. That's right. That's right. So this one is running. So I'm going to okay. Look. Let me increase a bit the font. Okay. Is this okay for you guys? Can you guys see this clearly? Okay. So, when we check on the Docker image, oh yeah, since it's a new terminal, I need I I still need to run this same command to make the Docker command run in this thing. Yeah, this is one of the troublesome of using Docker toolbox. I don't know, but I like it. <laughs> so when we check the image, the Docker image, you will see that the the first row, we actually uh, create new image called Drupal Docker RD Web. So this Drupal Docker RD Web is a is an image. You, you, you can you can take it as a as an image that being generated from from the from the Drupal uh, this one, and then with this one the MySQL 5.6. You can of course you can you can push this. Image into the Docker Hub and, and it's private. Yes. Unless you publish it. Yeah, private or uh, unless you publish it, then everyone uh, can just use also if if you want if you want it to the Docker Hub. Okay. 
So, uh, sorry? For the deployment process, mm -hmm. where would you put if there is any deployment script? Yes, but that's going to be a long story. Oh, yeah, sure. it, it's, 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 give me a, it's, is it's it possible to give us some kind of line? Maybe okay, after. This is, okay. Maybe after the session. It's really, it's a, it's a, it's a really different topic. It's, it's going to be a long night if we discuss that. <laughs> Probably for the next session. Yeah. Okay. Docker. Then we check the Docker containers, right? So this is to check the running, the currently running containers right now. As you can see, right, we have two containers that, that is running. See? So if we compare with, let's say if you want to check out all the containers, including the one that is not running right now. So you see, we only have two containers running. Uh, this. So as you can see, right, this is the container, this is the container's uh, ID, and this is the image that uh, that currently being used and then this <coughs> this is the alias uh, actually the alias itself is is the one that we 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 set on the doc compose and then the mysql itself it's using mysql image and then it has it also has its own alias actually and this is what is is also tells that what kind of ports that being mapped yeah and then it's yeah this is the status how to tell that which container that is running Okay. Okay. So, what happened if we access this from URL? Let's find out. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to use. Are you guys able to see this? So I'm going to access uh, our Drupal site, localhost eighty eighty. Oh, I'm sorry. So since I'm using Docker Toolbox, right? The Docker Toolbox is actually assigned its own IP address for this one. Yeah. So uh, there's a command to check the, the the IP address that we currently use. But for the for the Docker for Max, I think the the basic IP address is a uh, is a local host. Yeah. So this is the IP this is the IP address. So it's a uh, kind of hard using Docker slash machine. This this machine, by the way, this machine then IP. Okay. okay so so eighty eighty right then. Oh, okay, okay. So it's never mind. This is actually is a is a is a Drupal thing. Don't worry, don't worry. This is a, this is a Drupal stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, work. Uh, where is it? Sorry, this is a bit private. <coughs> Hold on. I'm going to. Uh, okay. I delete some of the files. Oh yeah, no wonder. Okay, there you go. Sorry about that. So, so yeah, there you go. You already have a Drupal installation. The problem is because I have a file called settings.php, which means that the job, the, the it, it just tells that the Drupal is already been installed before. Oh, okay, so. Yeah, I mean, of so course, I mean. Thought it was already installed, so it tried yeah, to I mean, something. Yeah, yeah, I forgot to do this actually, but it's, it just tells that uh, we make it as if the uh, we have a fresh Drupal project files. So, okay. so I, I just delete the setting the PSP to make it as if this is the fresh Drupal installation. Mm -hmm. And after that, yes, just follow the next yeah, rules, uh, the next step to install. Is this also possible to put the brush commands inside the? The, the I'll, command manager. I'll get you into that. Hold on. Yeah. 
so we need we need to install this one first yeah okay just just follow whatever things in here right uh, what is this copy the blah 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 okay yeah then we copy then okay then uh, I'm just gonna copy this one CP default so if you notice I'm actually uh, copying default.settings.php into settings this is this is this is whatever the Drupal tells us how to install uh, uh, of course I mean if you guys are familiar of using Drupal this is very familiar process right ah, sorry sudo Okay, good. Okay, so again, the the, the, database, the database name. What is it? Uh, yes. No. Uh, that's why I put this one. Just to note, database name is DB name. Why? Because we put DB name as a as a as a database name and so on. Okay. Uh, sorry, where is it? Where is this? Ah, okay. Sorry. DB name, then username. You ask R R U S R name. Okay, then password. I think it's a it's a pass pass WD. Yes. And this one. Instead of a local host, we need to put R D my SQL. That's it. Let's go. So you could have. Install this while you install the Docker container, right? Sorry, sorry. With the drush command. Excuse me. You could have installed. You could have done all this thing, the drush drush installation of the. Yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. I you mean, you could have put it in the drush command. Yeah, you can. Docker command. You can, you can. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. What's wrong with this? Sorry. DB name. Maybe I put the wrongly. Username. <coughs> well, ah, it's default. Yeah, it's it's default actually. Hold on, maybe I put something. You did you put the database? Oh, yeah. Huh? Install. That's weird. What happened? Is it because uh, it's not being sorry? Is it because the permission? I don't know. Let's just this is settings, right? Yeah. Okay, that's correct. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Get to do the. It actually working. Uh, last time. Hopefully this is working this time. Past WD, it just tell you. Yeah. No, I'm I'm not device code. Yeah. This one is now. Okay, here it goes. Where is this? It's open condition tonight. What? My settings. Put the PWD. Sorry again? I copy a file that's indirectly referenced in settings. You, you put the PWD? Mm -hmm. PWD. Sites D. Oh. It's like, like, changing the container. 777 open. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Maybe I'm not sure. Oh, it says root. Okay, okay. Uh, why it says root? Maybe okay, okay. Maybe it needs to. Oh, actually, no. It's 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 already installed. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm not sure why anyway. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's already installed. Maybe it's a warning for the previous error. Maybe, maybe. 
so yeah just just fill in whatever you guys want in here this is the last and oh, there you go what nice error This 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 weird. Sorry, hold on. Maybe. Sorry. Things. This is the Drupal 8, the latest version, right? No, this is a Drupal 7 actually. Yeah, Drupal 7. Yes. Okay, nothing wrong. You are the Drupal dog. You you know you're familiar with Drupal? Yeah, but I use it through Panther. Uh -huh. So it's pretty much I just press a button and it creates an instance and does it. I tried when it was like the Drupal, when Drupal 7 first came out, uh -huh. but I don't remember half of the things I was doing. So after I discovered. Don't worry, Drupal 8 is. You, it makes your life more easier, Drupal 8. You don't have to know anything about the coding. Everything is on the, the community module. Just download the module. Yes, okay, okay, proceed, you start. <laughs> sorry, sorry. So it makes Not so much. Sure. Let's just try one more time. Yeah, it is, it is. Um, something funky, but you guys, yeah, I mean, you guys, you guys, you guys know, know, know the drill, right? I mean, uh, basically, you guys understand what is. Maybe it's a. Maybe it's a. For some reason, it's a permission issue on my side. And uh, what's the name of it? Sorry, uh, you asked. Yes, WD. RD MySQL. That's right. I think the database is already created. I believe so. I'm not sure, but uh, but but anyway, I mean, I mean, this it is doesn't go through the profile. Normally, you should, it must go through the, the basic Drupal profile. It must go through the standard profile, but it doesn't read it because that is why you just simply finish the module installation. Mm. Because in your Docker Docker configuration, mm? you haven't specified the Docker profile. Do, I mean, Drupal installation profile. No need. Actually, the the do, the you see that just like that so it doesn't go through the profile then. maybe what? you can go through the profile here mm -hmm. uh, uh, what profile maybe you, you must set the standard over the configuration file oh proceed with the standard standard or proceed mm -hmm. with the minima I don't know where you configure the instruction profile okay but yeah but but. That's basically it. Maybe I mean, the it's Docker file, maybe in the Docker yeah. file or any, maybe the uh, Trust Composer YAML. Yeah. The Trust will work or what? Hmm? The Trust will work on in your container right now? Yes, it's, it should be already, already working. Uh, try minimal. Uh, 
maybe it's the it's the permission. Let me try. Hold on. Maybe it doesn't have the permission. You know, it doesn't have the permission to write settings down PHP. Could be. Well, it's called to undefined function. So maybe the path is not set properly. Those are the path will indicate the default path. Okay. Maybe, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Apologies for this, but um, it used to be working. I swear it's working. Yeah. Used to be. <laughs> Shit happens. I think it's yeah. Okay. Yeah, but anyway, uh, that's that's the way it goes actually. So maybe sometimes, like uh, Hajia mentioned, just now how we can run a just uh, just command. Uh, so first of all, we need we uh, we need to access the container itself. So I'm going to show you how actually the command I I usually use. Ah, sorry. Okay, so uh, from here, right? Uh, we want to access this one. This is the containers, uh, the one that uh, we have with the Jupyter project. So this is the command I use: Docker exec. Okay, then dash it, then the name, uh, the ID of the containers, and then this is the command. Uh, uh, the, the the command to to access the command line uh, of the containers. Enter. Nah, now we now already in in the containers itself inside the containers. This what this what uh, what it what it, what it looks like. So we exit just Docker exit. Yes, just exit. That's it. Exit. You go in again. <coughs> Launch. Yes, you can do that. I mean, we can, we can, we can set, we can install SSH as well. But of course, that have to be defined in the Docker file. But this is just the fastest way. Yeah. So, so we can find out what's the, what's the, what's the, uh, the Linux command, uh, the, li the the Linux distribution. I usually just use this one. So it just tells that this is a Debian chain in Linux. Okay. Then we can. See that this is the the our project file, and then the composer. If we can check, it's actually should be installed. It's the composer command. Then the juice itself. Let's rerun juice status. Okay. No, I mean like when you make the configuration file, the Docker configuration file, something like a Docker file mm -hmm. or. Docker composer yeah, yeah, well, mm -hmm. can you put your trust command inside you just finished all the installation yeah, yeah you command. can you can that's what I was meaning you, know? you can you can you can even put run just install something you can so you finished you everything can you in can. your configuration file yes. you finish it up. that's probably the the leverage uh, steps yeah. uh, from what I uh, the the one I explain right now is is the most basic one but of course you get the idea okay. you get the idea right okay so uh-huh but can you access the file outside the container? Yes, this this one. It is the same right? Yes, this one. So if I make any change in the Yeah. So if I let's say change it Yes. So I just copy this XML RPC into XML copy PSP, right? So if I there you go. What if you delete the file Of course. That's it. I mean if you delete from the command prompt. Oh, you need to keep that thing Same stuff. That's that's what the mom working actually. So if you have two, uh, is there a you mean whether we can specify uh, more than one mount? Is it one, no, no, no. one, one? Uh, 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 depends. Depends. Oh, okay. Uh, like for a sample, right? Uh, 
this is also one of the practice that 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 I use. You can you can you can try by itself. But um, if we check on the my scale itself, right? Yeah. On the my scale, uh, you can actually mount as well in the container for the app my scale. Uh, so so mount ah so this one. So I can I can do this. I can I will show you my I will share you my 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 uh, my stuff. Here. I can I can do this as well in my containers. Uh, volumes, for example. Then, where do you want this to to be mount? Let's say dog food. Then. Uh, uh, maybe we can just name it MySQL DB for example. Then we do, do something like this. So, so, so all the, you know, you know, uh, yeah. This is yeah. This is this is the settings of the MySQL, right? Then, uh, then after that, in the in the folder itself, we can create another folders called actually it goes into like this. Ah, sorry. Yeah, correct. Docker, docker, docker. Ah, actually correct. Sorry, MySQL. Then we need to create something like this. My SQL DB. You can do that. So. Kind of shared by all the Yes, yes, yes. So let's say if you have a settings like let's say my dot .cnf, for example, you can you can actually. Uh, uh, um, uh, mount that directly down that has a that contain the <coughs> configuration file. Then put it into the content itself to make it as uh, to make it as a settings for the SQL content itself. That's also one of the practice. Okay, where where were we? Yeah. Then we can uh, same goes for the containers, right? For the MySQL. This is the last one. So we can actually access the containers of the of the MySQL itself. Same thing. So if we use this uh, root, for example, right root, then the password we just set. Pass the DB. No, no, no. The root password. I think I set up uh, differently actually. Right. That's the <laughs> Okay, PSWD. Oh, sorry. Okay. Ah. Ah. Then you will see that the database is actually already been created as well. See, DB name. Then, then I uh, use DB name and show tables. Ah, there. That's it. Okay. Thank you. And. You mean like in one containers? In one container or multiple containers? And how, how much, what's the minimum requirement that you need for the server? Say you're running over Raspberry Pi. Well, if uh, assuming that you need to install local engine on your machine, yeah. Yeah. but I believe it's gonna be big because mostly the one that uh, service that mostly hosts the containers is the one that already being called cloud services. Yeah. So ideally, this is this is need to be hosted into the cloud ser services. So it's hoping on oh, like you to deploy like a local server. Let's say if you have a if you have a, a a PC that install Linux, for example, in your home, yeah. yes, of course you can install the Docker engine oh. itself. Then after that, you host your container or Docker registry by itself. I don't know. I have no idea about that. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same similar question. Like, what like? Uh, it's more for Drupal, maybe I don't know. But uh, 
what sort of image should you be run? Like the operating system, like what's the minimum you can have for Drupal to run? Do you need things like Chrome or do you, like the minimum is it a lamp stack? For example, it depends. Uh, depends on your on your what your requirement. I mean, that's the minimum of of uh, of the of the Drupal that should be run, right? I mean, it, it, it depends on, on what kind of environment. Maybe you need to have another GD library that need to be installed. It, it depends. I mean, Drupal... Uh, Yes, yes, yes. I mean, uh, like this, for example, right? Uh, where should I just now? In this Drupal image, it doesn't come with. I, I think it comes with the fantasy. It doesn't come with the underlying operating system. This is what I was going to ask. Yeah, because it comes with like OS. Yeah, it comes with the OS. I think it comes with the OS. You can look at the Docker file. Yes. Uh, to be honest, I you mean whether it has maybe roughly to say maybe uh, whether this image has already Drupal inside of it? Is it like that? Like, like that? No, like, uh, like, so this image here, what operating system does it run on? Like, oh, uh, can we just use like a core OS or like what other stuff we need? Like I don't think it's it tells in here, but usually uh, the most popular one is using like. For Linux, maybe Deep, Debian. Debian. Yeah, Debian. Just now. If you let's say if you want to use, for example, Engine X, for example, you can do that. Engine X. They have also an image for the Engine X. Yes, you can. Uh, I I suggest if you want to build your own image, probably start with just the. Linux itself. Let's say find the image for Debian. I mean, just freshly Debian or, or CentOS. Doesn't have like a Drupal. Doesn't have like a things. I believe it's already been installed something. I mean, just like 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 for example, if you want to use other than Core OS, is just uh, operating system the one that support for Docker. I believe you can. You can. I so you're wondering like what other dependencies do we need? Because Core OS just gives you the OS, right? Mm. It doesn't give you like any other like, like Vim and all those kind of stuff. Yes, yes. So we're wondering like what other dependencies do Drupal need? <coughs> oh, I, I mean, I mean, it's, it's I think it's like, it's is, it's more on the general. I mean, it's I I I usually if you can see I usually just uh, install whatever I need like. Like uh, film. I mean, e even if you have a VPS itself, right? I believe it's it's still fresh. There's no film. There's no GD library. There's no zip. There's no. You have to install by okay. yourself. So it's a it's the same it's the same concept. Just for trial and error. If you see anything that is missing. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I mean, I usually does that. I mean, if if there's something, I usually just uh, uh, try to record whatever the commands that I use. Okay. Then try then put it into the. Local file. Then after that, I run. Then it will be. You can get whatever you want. I just run. So I think that we can get an OS image and then install the Drupal. Yeah, whatever the components that support the Drupal. Yeah. Actually, what he's asking me is what's the Drupal? Actually, if you go to the Drupal website, there there's this information on Drupal form. That's it. That's it. That's that's the answer. I mean, if if you go to the Drupal site, they they have uh, some set. Of a requirement, yeah. Then after that, you just I don't know, create yourself, or or you can use one of these, for example. Like you don't just stand alone, Drupal, like only Docker. Yeah, this is what you need to Docker based local environment for Drupal. Yeah. So yeah. So so this is this one the, of the of the alternative. If you don't, I mean, if you feel lazy, right? You can use Scalabox and you can use this one. This is also built on top of a, of a Docker. Yeah, and it, it, it has already like Docker. Yeah. So, so is it like production ready? Can we use it for production? Uh, production ready. That's that depends on the on the deployment on on yeah. Uh, but this one is meant for the for the local, right? Local, local development. Yeah. 
Both of them, Colorbox as well. Uh, I think I'm not sure whether you can use other cloud service, but I think you can use only for Get Pantheon, Get Pantheon server. Uh, yeah, yeah, Get Pantheon. And then the Docker for Drupal itself, it's a, uh, it's just a pretty one set of a predefined settings. You can change kind of settings to generate the image, uh, generate the containers for you. Okay, so. Thank you so much uh, for coming. Hopefully, you guys having a good time. Uh, and I believe you already done this. Right? So, okay, that's it. <laughs> Thank you.